Zach. How's it going? All right, how are you? Very good. How are you? Good. So I've actually got my um, camera working on my computer. It's awesome. And, yeah, much better than last time. It's good stuff. I'm advancing technologically. Welcome everyone to week two of February's Advisor Ambassador Program. My name is Zach Hules and I work in the Marketing and Communications Department at the uh, NAFA Home Office. Uh, today we are joined with Matt Wilson from NAFA Alabama. Matt is a uh, seasoned Advisor Ambassador speaker for us and uh, we are happy to have him back presenting Building Your Professional Network. If you have any questions for him during the presentation, feel free to use the chat feature in the Zoom window. It's uh, at the bottom of the screen there. And if you have some questions for him at the end of the presentation, uh, feel free to unmute yourselves, maybe even share your video and ask him directly. But for now, I'm gonna turn things over to Matt. So Matt, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me, Zach. And it's uh, an honor and a pleasure to be here. Uh, again, as he stated, I'm Matt Wilson from Birmingham, Alabama with NAFA, Alabama. And today we're gonna be talking about building your professional network. Obviously, we're all in the a business of relationships. So whether it's prospecting or whether it's building our professional network, the relationships that we have are vital to our success in this industry. So a uh, little background on me. I've uh, been a NAFA member since 2011, uh, past NAFA Birmingham president, uh, past NAFA Alabama president, um, a few NAFA Birmingham and NAFA Alabama awards. Uh, and then I'm the president of my firm here in Birmingham, which is Perpetual Lifestyle Planning, the continuous planning for someone's lifestyle. So for me, this is uh, the lifeblood of what I do because I want to continuously help somebody plan. I've got to have very strong relationships with not only my clients and my prospects, but also the people that are in the professional network because that's where the bulk of my referrals come from. And it should be the case for everybody on this call and presentation as well. So the, the more solid relationships you have, the better. And this is similar if you were on my prospecting call, this is similar um, from the standpoint of, of how you can get connected to these people because you're going to be running in these same circles uh, for both. And there are people that are going to be prospects in these circles and they're going to be people that are you know in the uh, professional world that you need to connect with that may not maybe they are clients maybe they're not clients uh, but they can turn you on to other people they could open doors for you now or in the future and just the more people you know and the the more solid those relationships are uh, the better off you're going to be in all as all aspects of your life uh, but, you know, first start with who do you know? Uh, you've got family members that are professionals. Obviously, you want to try to connect with those people. Uh, you've got people that are close friends. Uh, you've got people maybe uh, where you work out. You've got people at your church, uh, other organizations that you're a part of. Obviously, we are a part of a large member organization that is nationwide. NAFA is uh, a great place to develop professional relationships. Uh, boards that you serve on, uh, parents of your children, if you are of age where you do have those children. Uh, those are all great places to meet and develop those professional relationships because, you know, you're, you're going to be talking to these people anyway. You might as well let them know what you do. And if they are at uh, a you know, sister firm or a, a competing firm in your market, don't just rule those people out as people that uh, you don't need to be in touch with or you don't need to get to know because, uh, number one, I think it's always good to know who you're competing against. But number two, you never know when your paths are going to cross in the future. And so when you go to a NAFA event, you know, I see everybody there as uh, you know, a part of the same team. We're, we're all a part of NAFA. We're all there trying to learn and grow uh, things of that nature. But, you know, when it comes to uh, changes in your life and you know inevitably we're all gonna have changes at some point uh, I know that I've changed broker-dealers in the past I've, I've changed firms in the past the relationships that you have throughout this industry are going to be helpful in not only you know weeding through that decision you know what's the right fit for me what's the wrong fit uh, what have you experienced that you like what have you experienced that you don't like uh, when you're trying to navigate 
uh, selecting a broker dealer or, or the firm that you're going to be with, the more professional guidance that you can get, the better off you're going to be. So uh, again, NAFA is a great organization that can allow you to get to know other people that are in your community or around the country, even around the world. So uh, who knows you? Uh, people that know, like, and trust you will do business with you. And from that standpoint, um, when somebody's going to refer you, they've got to know who you are, what you do, why you do what you do. I just think it's imperative to uh, have that solid relationship so that you know when you come up in the community, um, if your name is mentioned, you want it to be something that's positive. Uh, obviously, the more people that know you, like you, trust you, the better off that conversation is going to go. Uh, maybe somebody gets referred to you and they ask a friend, hey, uh, I got referred to uh, Angie Tony. Do you know anything about Angie? Uh, well, yeah, I've heard Angie's fantastic. You know, we're, we're connected through these different people. Uh, definitely somebody that I want to talk to. And Angie, I just singled you out. We've never met, but um, that's just the way that it works. If you can get social validation, where somebody's able to say, hey, you know what, I've heard good things about this person, that's going to solidify the things that you're already telling to the people that you're trying to work with. Uh, you know, who do you partner with? Who are your centers of influence? Uh, CPAs are vital in this business. Uh, estate planning attorneys, vital in this business. Uh, property and casualty agents, vital in this business. Uh, mortgage brokers, um, who else? Um, those are, are key people that you would like to be connected with because those are all people that are meeting with other people on a regular basis. And even though they may not do what you do, they have people that they come and sit in front of them and say, Hey, I've got a need for this. Who, who should I talk to? And if you're front of mind, then you're the person that they're going to say, you know what? Uh, you ought to talk to this person. I got a, uh, text from somebody today that said, hey, you were recommended to me by a mutual friend. We've never met, but but I want to sit down with you and I want to talk because he recommended you highly. This is somebody that I know from church. Uh, we've served on some boards together and it, it's just an extremely important and powerful way. You can sing your praises all day long, uh, but if you've got other people that are advocates for you that are singing your praises uh, so that you don't have to, uh, first of all, I don't ever think that it's a, a good idea to toot your own horn. Uh, it's much better to walk into a situation and have somebody else have already given you uh, credibility versus just trying to have to earn it all on your own. So uh, let somebody else do the heavy lifting for you. And then you walk into the situation and now all of a sudden it's a warm introduction versus just walking in there cold. Uh, but, you know, ultimately you want to know what makes you different. Why should somebody do business with you versus, you know, somebody else? I mean, uh, in the, um, the office building that I'm in, you know, I've got uh, an office suite here, uh, but the office two doors down is a, another financial advisor uh, with the same broker dealer that I'm with. You know, there's a large agency that's in the lobby of this building. And uh, one of my best clients is to my right. They're a large mortgage company. Uh, they send me a lot of business. I send them a lot of business uh, because we're connected. I like the strategic location of where I'm at because I'm boxing out the competition that's a couple doors down. And, um, you know, when the owner of the mortgage company comes by my office, you know, several times a week, uh, that just solidifies that relationship. But uh, the point is uh, I had to sell him on a value proposition. I had to explain to him why I was different than the guy a couple of couple doors down the hallway I had to explain to him why I was different than the person in the front of the lobby and he has turned me on to other people because not only does he know why I'm different but he can explain to the people that he's sending my way this is why I would do business with Matt this is why I would do business with Mark Aker uh, it's beyond just Mark's good looks I mean I know that he's going to take good care of people and he loves to serve so um, you've got to know why you're different and then be able to, you know, not only explain and, and really, um, you know, let the, let that why go before you. Uh, but also you've got to have other people that know your why also so that they can, you know, clearly convey that message when they're talking to somebody that is trying to figure out 
of why they should be doing business with you. So when it comes to these professional relationships and, and building these business relationships, uh, the, the picture on the left is taken at the NAFA Congressional Conference. I think that is one of the best ways that you can get to know not only the people that are in your state association, because you're going to all go on Capitol Hill, you're going to all you know, spend time in Washington, D.C., uh, but you're also going to be able to meet people from around the country that they're, they're there to have the same mindset. Uh, they're all wanting to advocate for their clients. They're all wanting to advocate for this industry. And so some of the people in this picture have become great friends. Uh, the guy on the right, we've roomed together numerous times. The guy on the left, we have uh, roomed together uh, a couple times as well. And then the guy in the middle is a congressman from Mobile. And because we were able to develop professional relationships going up there multiple times, uh, we did not get to have a meeting with him that day because he was obviously coming from the Capitol. But as we're walking to the Capitol, we were able to stop him, say hello. We had rapport and it was uh, a great conversation and also made for a good photo op. Um, from that standpoint, quality is more important than quantity, but a combination is great. So, you know, you obviously want to have a lot of different connections. You want to have a lot of different um people that you're involved with, uh, but the deeper those relationships are, the, the better off things are going to be. And uh, the, the more it's going to benefit you in your business, because the, the more solid those relationships versus just having a million relationships that are only an inch deep, uh, if you can go further, farther, uh, truly solidify those relationships, then you're just going to be that much better off. Uh, in your professional career. Uh, the picture on the right is actually a couple guys that I met through small group, small group with my church. Um, this guy right here, um, his name's Alexander Shannara. If you're from anywhere around the Southeast, he is one of the largest uh, attorneys here in the Southeast. And he's known as, you know, kind of nationwide as a marketing genius. Uh, I actually met him at the gym and then he invited me to come to his small group. He introduced me to the gentleman on the right. And, you know, that guy has not only become uh, a great client, but also a great friend. And he has connected me to so many other people. And the friend on the left actually uh, was the CEO of an organization. Uh, it was a, a large website here in town. And he has gotten my podcast on that uh, website and then also got me in front of you know, about a million uh, subscribers that they have uh, on their website to promote the podcast. So, I mean, that was all through relationship. I met one guy who introduced me to another guy who introduced me to another guy and all three of those relationships right there have produced amazing fruit. Um, so, you know, be kind to everybody because you never know where it's going to lead. You never know what door you're walking into, uh, how not only it could be a life-changing relationship, but you know, it could be beneficial to you now. It could be beneficial to you five years from now. It could be beneficial to you 10 years from now, but you never want to build a relationship uh, just for what's in it for me right now. You want to constantly be thinking about what, number one, what can I do to, to bring value to this person? but you never know where it's going to end up and, and where uh, ultimately these roads can lead you. Um, so just some things that, that I would recommend. Um, this is one of the best books I've ever read, and it's John Maxwell, Intentional Living. Uh, I read this book in 2016, and up until that point, I would say that, that I was a pretty proactive person, but uh, I really came to the conclusion that, that I had a lot of good intentions but I wasn't as intentional as I needed to be. This book will take you from good intentions to being intentional. And from that standpoint, your productivity goes up. When you make that mindset shift, when you think about one day, I'm going to do this one day, when this happens, I'm going to do this. But when you shift from one day to today, there is a big shift in your mindset. There's a big shift in your productivity. There's a big shift in how you live your life. And the things that you will get done on a daily basis just goes up exponentially because now it's not, I'm going to wait on 
the, the perfect timing is, is I need to get this done right away because I'm going to be intentional. Um, so I read that book in 2016. It was a major catalyst for me. Um, highly recommend it. But again, be thinking about how you're going to add value to people. Um, at the end of the day, there are plenty of salespeople out there that are pushing product. And if you are a product pusher, uh, I would argue that you're probably going to be left by the wayside in uh, the next 10, 15, 20 years because people can buy product online. I mean, ultimately, they can go to robo advisors, they can go uh, purchase life insurance online, they can go and purchase a lot of the different things that we offer without needing you. So if you're just selling a product, stop. Because people don't want to be sold. They want to you know, be consulted. They want to uh, be heard. They want to find a solution for a problem. And you need to sit down and truly understand what they're trying to accomplish and then come up with that solution. Now you're a trusted advisor. And in doing that, uh, again, your reputation is going to precede you in business environments because when you walk in, you're not going to be known as the life insurance salesman or uh, the annuity salesman or the mutual fund salesman or uh, XYZ product salesman. You're going to be known as this is a person that, that knows their clients, loves their clients, serves their clients, takes care of their clients. And this is a person that you want to work with. So when you think about adding value, it's just it's so beneficial. And, you know, when I've got all these people that I'm connected with, uh, it's so that I can know how to serve them. You know, when somebody comes to me and they sit in my office, they say, Matt, you know, I'm about to, to purchase a home. Who would you recommend? And I say, hey, my buddy next door owns a mortgage company. I know he's going to take care of you like nobody else. Now, I've got other people that I can refer you to, but this is the guy that I used and this is the person that I would recommend. That goes a long way. And, and when you start sending people to other people, they say, you know what? I appreciate you taking care of me. How can I take care of you? You try and serve them first and they want to come back and they want to reciprocate. That's not why you do it, but it's just a natural law. And so from that standpoint, I've got all of these different people that I'm connected with that when somebody has a need, I'm trying to find a way to fill that need because I want to serve. I want to add value. And I just think that that's so critical. Uh, we're in a society that's constantly promoting self over service. Uh, it's, it's very me first. And I think that there is a great need for us in this industry to serve more than any time in the future because people, I mean, I just had a friend yesterday, a young guy that I mentor, we're working out at the gym. And he said a close friend of his uh, was talked to by uh, a local agent and the guy told him uh, to just go ahead and sign up. You know, they could figure out the details later. Uh, just sign here. We'll, we'll get it all figured out. Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to sign on a dotted line or, or sign electronically before they understand exactly what they're getting into. You know, it, it gives our industry a bad name. It, it gives the clients uh, just trepidation about dealing with other people in the industry. And again, it's typically uh, somebody that's been trained the wrong way. They're new to the business. They're, they're hungry. They're trying to eat. I get it. Uh, but, you know, the more we can shift that mindset and that conversation, the better off all of us are because um, the reality is our industry gets a bad reputation on a regular basis. And when the bad apples spoil the bunch, it hurts all of us. So, uh, the more we can add value, the better. Um, call people by name. You know, when when you're meeting with somebody for the first time, try to catch their name, try to repeat their name, try to remember their name. And, you know, I, I know that you want to get business cards, things of that nature, uh, although that's becoming a thing of the past as well. You want to get their contact information, but typically just get it in your phone and give it to them in your phone because people – i got a stack of business cards that's about three inches thick right here on my desk. I can't tell you who half those people are, but the people that I got their contact and I put in my phone, not only are they now like in my device, this thing that I carry with me everywhere, they're front of mind. But if it's just a business card, there's not really a, a deep rooted connection there. And, but ultimately when you call somebody by their name, 
uh, it means something to them. One of the greatest sounds that anybody can ever hear is their name spoken back to them. So when you say, uh, Mark, you know, it's great to meet you, enjoyed spending time with you, uh, really enjoy the conversation, and uh, I'm looking forward to catching up with you versus, hey, good to see you, buddy. Uh, good to see you, pal. And I used to be a buddy, pal, um, you know, whatever person because I was meeting a lot of people, but I wasn't remembering their name. Now, if I can, like I'm constantly, at, all right, what is this person's name? I want to remember their name before I get over to them because I know the impact that it has on me. And therefore, I know the impact that it's going to have on somebody else. Um, so very important. And it also just makes it more personalized. So um, when somebody is, is called by their name and you meet a lot of people and you call them by name, that stands out. You know, so uh, people tell me, how do you remember everybody's name? Well, I just, like I make it a point to remember name. Do I always? Uh, not always, but I'm probably like 90%. If I've met you, uh, I'm going to remember your name because it's so important to me that I want to make you feel valued because I like to feel valued. And so again, I cannot overemphasize uh, building strong centers of influence. We touched on that on the previous slide. Uh, but what are the best ways to do that? So when you meet that person, you call them by name, you see uh, you know what they're doing. You, you want to connect with them further, connect with them on social platforms. And, you know, I understand that we're in the business world and, and everybody, you know, LinkedIn, LinkedIn, it's your online business card. It is, but it's, it's very impersonal. So you can share your business stuff online uh, through LinkedIn and, and people will know, uh, you know, the, the sponsored content that you have, or people will know, uh, you know, the, the compliance approved piece that you have, they'll know the, the very sterile aspect of, of who you are and what you do. But when you get on Facebook, when you get on Instagram, when you get on these other social platforms, I'm not even talking about Snapchat or TikTok or any of those because I'm a little bit too old for those. Um, but, you know, I was just at a conference this past weekend. Well, I was Tuesday through Saturday. I was in uh, Redding, California. A business conference and I met people from all around the world and you know not only did I connect with them on LinkedIn but I've connected with them on the social platform of their choice I asked them are you on social media yes where and then they tell me and other than the the two 27 year olds that I met that were only on Instagram uh, and or the other ones that that I'm not on uh, most of the people that they've got Facebook and to me Facebook is one of the most powerful platforms. People can say it's old and outdated and only old people are on there. And again, I'm on the older end of, of the spectrum, especially when it comes to yats. But um, it's, it's real. You've got the ability to share your story. You've got the ability to share your experiences. You've got the ability to share your life and your family. And people get to hear more about who you are as a person versus what you do. And I've got a Facebook business page. I've got a Facebook business profile, all those things. I don't post nearly as much on there, uh, but I post a lot of stuff personally. And again, number one, I, I feel like it's a, a platform to encourage people and really uh, just put some positive stuff back in the world because they get bombarded with the negative on a regular basis. But through the personal interactions, uh, the, the real interactions that are on there, the de development of relationships that have come out of that platform alone have been incredible. I mean, and, and again, I'm not posting about my business. I'm posting about life and people connect. They say, you know, I see what you're posting on there and I want to talk to you about business. Like you don't post about your business, but I want to talk to you about business. I want to talk to you about this stuff that you've got going on. I want to get involved with the stuff that you're involved with because they see the passion and they see that, like you're willing to put yourself out there and in a good way. And if uh, I meet people sometimes, I don't want to connect to my clients or prospects on Facebook because I post some stuff that I shouldn't post. Well, stop posting that stuff. If you're not willing to post this stuff that, that your clients, your prospects, or, you know, somebody that, you know, you really, um, you know, respect or admire uh, that you would not want them to see, then you don't need to post it. And uh, sorry if that's harsh, but, 
uh, if your only connection to somebody is on LinkedIn and all they see is uh, very stuffy business content that most people scroll through anyway, they're looking for something that's unique. And, and when you're putting something that's canned out there, it, you're, maybe you get a handful of likes, but it's human interaction. That's what we do. I mean, when you have human interaction with people, that's why people do business with you. It's a human connection. That is something that goes beyond the commodities that we are offering. And the more we can connect with people on a human level, uh, the more powerful it is uh, where we can convey our message. So I think that that's extremely important. Um, but you need to recognize the great opportunity that we have and the unlimited potential this industry provides. I mean, there's no better industry where you can serve people where you can take care of people, multi-generations of people. You can help them in their personal life. You can help them in their business life. You can help their kids. You can help their grandkids. Uh, you can help their parents. Um, you can help all different types of people in so many different ways. And when you realize like there really is no limit on what you can do in this business and how you can do it, compliance approved, obviously. Uh, but you know, there's endless possibilities. And, you know, the, the people that are on this call, I mean, all of us are in this industry, but we probably all got different backgrounds. And the way that we market, the way that we uh, actually do the day-to-day, the -day, but that's the beauty of, you know, this industry. There, there's no right way or wrong way. There's just different ways. As, as long as we're putting the client first and we're serving them, and we're letting them know that they're the reason why we're doing what we're doing, then there's a lot of different ways that you can be really successful. And oh, by the way, um, the more people you serve, the more people you help, the more money you're going to make. I mean, just by nature of doing the right thing over and over, that the success will take care of itself. So, um, but ultimately you want to replicate your best clients uh, and, you know, the more you can reach out to those folks, uh, the more you serve, uh, you're going to, to continue to build your business uh, from just building that professional network, uh, meeting with people that are similar to you. And I would tell you this, you know, a lot of times people say meet with people that are just like you, meet with people that aren't like you as well, because um, number one, you're gonna learn something. Number two, you're gonna grow. Uh, number three, you're going to uh, find that you've got more in common than you thought you did. Um, so like I can tell you that from personal experience, some of the people that, that I've connected with uh, that I didn't think I would have anything in common with, we start talking, we realize we've got a lot in common. And those have been some of the best relationships that I've ever had. So I know that we naturally gravitate to people that have things in common. But don't just look at somebody that's different than you and say, well, that, we're never going to get along. We never there's nothing that we've got in common. First of all, you're both human beings. Uh, you know, God created all of us. Uh, but number two, you've got uh, whatever city or state you're in, you're, you're both residents of that place. Uh, number three, you probably go to the same places around town. Number four, uh, you know, as you start to connect the dots, you realize you've got more dots that are connected and are disjointed. So try to find a commonality with everybody versus thinking, I'm only going to talk to people that look, sound, or act just like I do because we've got a serious problem with polarization in this country. And it's because people only want to sit down with people that they think are just like them. And that's a problem. So we've got the opportunity to, to be a part of that solution by getting to know people that are different and then finding the commonality between uh, those different folks. Um, how can NAFA get involved or how can NAFA help? Uh, you've got to get involved. I mean, um, I joined NAFA in 2011 because I needed to be a part of a pre professional organization because I want to be a part of MDRT. Um, I mean, I'll just tell you at that point, I was a very selfish person. I wanted, you know, what's in it for me. Uh, I signed up for the wrong reasons. Thankfully, uh, somebody asked me to get on the, the NAFA Birmingham board. I did. Next thing I know, I'm the NAFA Birmingham president. Uh, only a couple years in, didn't really know what I was doing, but that led to me becoming uh, on the board of the NAFA Alabama. 
uh, the NAFA Alabama board. Next thing I know, I'm president of NAFA Alabama. Uh, the lifelong relationships, the lifelong professional relationships that have been developed with people all around this country through NAFA, I cannot emphasize it enough. It's an incredible group of people. It's people that want to help. It's people that want to serve, people that want to do business the right way. And, you know, when you go to the congressional conference, when you go to P plus P, when you go to your you know, local meetings, state meetings, whatever, you are going to meet people that are similar and different, but that want to, to come together and, and make this industry a better place. So, you know, the value that, that I place on my NAFA membership, like it's hard to put a price on it. I mean, I know what I pay. But the value that I receive is so much greater than the cost because some of the doors that it has opened, um, I, I could have never opened on my own. And uh, one story I like to tell is, you know, I used to um, reach out to my previous congressman on a regular basis. Um, not that I had any relationship with him, but I would just read a, a news article and I'd get fired up and I'd contact his office and I would always get a form letter back. and. Uh, you know, thank you for reaching out to our office, blah, 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 blah. Well, I get involved with NAFA and I meet my current congressman and I have him come speak at a NAFA Birmingham meeting. And now not only do I have a great relationship with him where I'm seeing him every few months, but I sent him a text last week. He's in DC, just told him, you know, hey, I appreciate all that you do. Really, uh, I, I can't thank you enough for the, the fight that you do on a daily basis. And you know, he said, you know, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, I couldn't even get a return phone call from my previous congressman. And this congressman, thanks to NAFA, not because of who I am, but thanks to NAFA, I was able to develop a relationship with him that is so much further than I ever would have had outside of that. And that's just one example. There are so many people that are in political office that they recognize NAFA. And then you come in with that pin on your sport coat uh, or your suit jacket and they say oh you're a part of NAFA I know NAFA and that just opens that door even further um, so obviously we're all our own individual unique brands but the NAFA umbrella uh, the protection that it provides for our industry the protection that it provides for all the products and benefits that we offer for our clients but also the camaraderie and the uh, just inclusion that they have, like no matter who you are, whatever your background is, everybody's welcome to come and serve and fight together. And that's just a beautiful thing that, that I haven't seen anywhere else in this industry. I know there are other industry organizations, but none of them hold a candle to NAFA. And if you want my contact info, uh, here is my contact info. Uh, happy to help in any way that I can. Uh, we covered a lot here. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Get the thumbs up for Mark Aker. I must have done a decent job. <laughs> Angie, do I get a thumbs up from you as well? Oh, two thumbs, thumbs up. up. All right. <laughs> What's up, buddy? Oh. <laughs> <coughs> well, uh, if there aren't any questions, I just want to say, Matt, thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And uh, just so you guys know, uh, registration is live for Congressional Conference right now. If you guys do want to go uh, to that, there is, uh, you can find that at advocacy.nafa.org 2020. And um, if you want to catch a recording of this, of today's class, uh, you can reach out to me at recording, uh, sorry, recruitment at nafa.org. Uh, I'll also be sending out this recording along with next week's sign up uh, in an email within the next two days. But uh, if there's nothing else, then I hope everyone has a great rest of their week. Thanks, nice Zach. Job, nice job, buddy. Thank Peace you, Mark. Y'all have a great day. Take care.